Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you doing? This, I know, Mr. Smith, you're very happy because the sun's out. It's a delightful morning. It's a delightful morning, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We'll begin by taking a roll call. Ms. Parker. Present. Mr. Hunter. Mr. Hess. Present. Mr. Thowen. Mr. Seroy. Mr. Dunnell. Mr. Smith. Present. Ms. Armour Erbs. Mr. Ashcraft. Ms. Monday. Present. Mr. Scanlon. Present. Mr. Wheeler. Mr. Alexander Hildebrand. Present. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. And you've all received the minutes uh, through mail. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Mr. Hess, present, seconded by Ms. Monday. All those in favor of accepting the minutes, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, good morning. Um, last week we were uh, able to meet with uh, the architect of the new animal control building. And this morning, we're really happy to be able to have a presentation by uh, Mr. Kusak, who is with a, a white um, firm, and white, white and Company, actually, and he is going to give us a little bit of a, a presentation about where we are and in the animal control construction. Mr. Ryan, Kusak, are you there? Good yeah, hi. Can you can you see and hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing this morning? Doing great. We're pretty excited to hear what you have to say this morning. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm sorry. We're running into some technical difficulties here at the office. Um, unfortunately, that. our internet just went down uh, like five minutes ago. Um, so I can't, uh, I mean, I, I'm on my phone right now, so I can't actually run through uh, the slides that I have, I could still talk about the project um, and just kind of go through the explanation of it um, and then maybe follow up with the visuals like as an email or something uh, as soon as we get things restored here, if that's okay. Hey, Ryan, can you hear me, Ryan? Yeah, hi, Andy. Okay, uh, the, do you have this, is it the same deck that you sent me before? Uh, is the building? It's or different, it's but if you want to pull up um, what you have, we can kind of just use that so that we've got something there. Yeah, yeah it was either that or do you have it in your email where you sent it to somebody else yesterday and you could just forward that email from your phone to us? Uh, no, I don't. It's only, yeah. unfortunately, okay. here on our network, and I don't know how to get it off without, gotcha. <laughs> without the internet, so I apologize for this. No, no, I, I get this it. This is get it. one of those problems that we, I feel like, only have like once every two years, but it's happening right now, so. Yes. <laughs> Let me see if I have it real quick, Tinker, okay? Okay, thank you, Andy. It'll just take a second, I hope. Yes. Uh, can I pose a question for Ryan? Uh, Ryan, this is Steve Hunter, and, and uh, this is a fabulous program uh, project, and it'll take us uh, into, you know, uh, many decades in the future. And I know that's uh, been a project that uh, Chairman Wheeler has pushed, and he's brought along uh, the, the, the vast majority, in fact, probably all of the county board members um, it's it's something that we can hang our hats on, and we can take pride in, in a collective effort to 
uh, see this thing come uh, to fruition. The only concern I, I have had regarding uh, the project is not the edifice itself, was the uh, parking uh, conditions. Because uh, I know, for example, and I, some of you guys may remember me bringing that question up time after time, that you know when you have buses, uh, when you have visitors, et cetera, and, and I know that uh, uh, the question was posed, I, I assume it's gonna be a new edifice and we'll probably be having um, regional uh, workshops there. Will we have enough parking area um, as proposed to, to address those particular uh, needs? Well, I can tell you, Steve, it's not a place that we're going to be having regional conferences because there's sick animals in the building. Um, well, it's that, not that, a place that, where the public can. It's not a place where the public can go walk through and hang out with the animals in the cages. Well, well what I'm saying though, I, I was told uh, that there will be, uh, since it's a new edifice, that they would have uh, some regional uh, conferences there. So if 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 that's not what your no. desires are, that's that's fine with me, but I, I just posed a question of, about uh, uh, visitors, et cetera, you know, uh, uh, schools coming there and so forth, and, and I, I just want to make sure that we have enough parking area, that's all. That's the only concern I have. Yes. And that's really a carry question. Yes. Yeah. Carry. So our main priority was to have more space for the animals inside rather than focusing on the building outside as far as the grounds of it. If we did ever do anything like that, there is um, the highway department right down the road, the township park department, and then um, the church that we could probably ask if we wanted to park anything there. But I mean, we were really more concerned of the inside of the building and getting the facility that way rather than the grounds outside. Okay, Carrie, I, I hear what you're saying. So again, the thing, the response was that you're gonna use external uh, areas, uh, entities in order to accommodate uh, the parking uh, uh, needs. That's saying if we ever did anything like that, I don't see any reason why we would have any large group of people coming down to our building because as of right now, we just have people come through that are looking for their lost animal. There's never been a reason to have a group of um, children or the public just to come through the building for any reason. Before it's open, to, before we have animals in there, possibly, but I mean, there's really no reason why we'd have a busload of people come down there. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> and Carrie, don't we have to worry about children putting their hands in cages and liability and uh, perhaps even the calmest of dogs can quickly bite. So it's putting the kids probably in a little bit of danger um, and we don't want that. We don't want the kids to accidentally get bit because normally what a kid will do is see an animal and it's just natural for them to reach in there and want to pet. Dogs are not always that calm, especially when a stranger's around. So we have to be very careful about that. Correct. Yep. If, I, I, I have that uh, the, the schematic here of the outside overhead and inside that I can share my screen when the time comes, Ryan. Okay, so great. Thanks, if you Andy. want me to, you know, you just tell me what to do and I'll flip the, the screen. Can, and uh, Kelly, you've got that, correct? Yeah, if you want to just show the graphics you have, and I can kind of just speak to to those. Okay, that'll work. Um, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> We're good to go. Uh, yeah. So, as I'm sure you all know, the project's at 134 Mooney Drive, um, you... and it's it's an expansion of the existing Illinois Police and Fire Building uh, that'll provide upgraded facilities for animal control uh, to increase the capacity to improve the living and working conditions, uh, to streamline operations, facilitate maintenance, and it's designed to meet the current and future needs for animal control services. Um, do you have like a site plan or floor plan or something there? Yeah, I didn't realize the meeting was live. I apologize. Let's make sure this is the right one. You guys see him there? Yes. Exterior? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Andy. All right. You tell me. Uh, what you so want that's to see. so that's the exterior appearance of the building showing the uh, that existing 
building that's there is sort of that right gray box and then the addition would be the the portion that's in red and there's also a portion sort of behind that that uh, takes care of the dog housing um, do you have uh, did you have like a site plan in in that set there yes uh, one second there we go uh, so the the site is about one and three quarter acres in area um, and you can see there um, that sort of existing building box that's like just to the north of the parking lot um, that's about 3,500 square feet of existing that we're taking advantage of uh, along with the existing 15 space parking lot our addition is to the to the back and to the left side of that uh, which is about 4,500 square feet of addition. And then we've added a staff parking lot with an additional 10 spaces off to the left there. Um, you can see there from the plan, those white boxes that are uh, just to the sort of north of the, uh, of the new addition building. Those are 26 outdoor dog runs. Um, and those dog runs are directly tied to the interior dog runs uh, with a look with a door separating inside from outside uh, and this will really facilitate cage cleaning and you know provide simple access to get the animals outdoors without putting them on a leash and walking them around uh, to to an exterior uh, kennel instead they can just open a door and staff can uh, let dogs out if they need to uh, to clean the interior runs or to get them some some outdoor time um, additionally, we have three simple exterior play yards that are shown with those green boxes. Those will allow, you know, for exercise inside a fenced enclosure for the animals. The entire outdoor dog area is enclosed, fully enclosed with six foot fencing. So we don't have to worry about dogs, you know, getting, getting out on the way, uh, on the way to those, to those play yard enclosures um and the dog runs are screened from the neighboring properties uh with a, a slatted chain link fence around those dog run areas and we've added some landscaping uh i don't think it's shown in, in that plan but it's on the uh like on the east side of the building uh kind of wrapping that corner around the uh the dog runs there we've also added in an additional concrete pad uh for possible future emergency dog runs is about another 400 square feet of concrete that can be used uh, to house either temporary dog runs if we're breaking up a dog fighting ring uh, or for like a future expansion uh, and then do you have a floor plan in there thanks um so this shows you know the facilities made up of administrative areas which are shown in blue uh, the cat areas are shown in orange dog areas are shown in green and then there's a sally port uh, that's in gray there that would allow secured entry of animals into the building um, and what this floor plan lets us do you know the office space is is better separated uh, between the animal areas and the office functions uh, from the from the current facility, it has a dedicated break room where you know sanitary employee lunch breaks can can take place separated from animal areas, um, and and there's a pretty good separation there between the between the different uh, uses. Uh, the the cat area has been uh, has been a little bit consolidated from this plan. Um, on the, that bar to the right where you see like the open cat social room the kitten room the open cat room that that whole bar like where it shows adoption and miscellaneous cage that's that's now isolation and intake for cats so basically the entire the entire cat area is just to the right of that office space um, and their veterinary area is, is just across from that. So everything for cats is like consolidated in one area of the building. And then in the, in the area of the, of the addition to the north there, uh, where you see a lot of the green, that's all really almost entirely dog area with some like service support spaces. 
Um, so we've got, you know, the, the dogs separated from the cats and um, you can kind of see there in green, dark green, we've, uh, we've divided up the dog areas further to allow for um, sick animals in the dark green areas where we have like 100% exhaust from the building divided from non-sick animals in the light green areas um, so that we don't have things like kennel cough spreading through the facility. Um, we have a separate rabies area uh, that, uh, that would allow those animals to be, you know, if they're being observed for rabies, to be isolated from, from the other dogs. Um, and we have two, uh, two dog isolation rooms that are fully exhausted uh, just to prevent disease spread. And again, all of these all of these dog kennels, you can kind of see what's happening with the indoor outdoor, where we have the kennel on the inside, and then there's like a dashed white box to the outside, where um, you know just a little guillotine sliding door uh, would separate those spaces so that uh, you know uh, workers can can get the dogs out there easily without a leash. Um, we yeah, also right. have open dedicated. Off, like do you open space. those all at once? Are those are Sorry, they to open all at once? Do you open those all at once? The doors? I mean, do you, do they just open the doors and they go out in that area, or is it each door has to be open separately? I mean, they can they can be operated individually uh, to to let animals out on an individual basis. Um, we I don't know if uh, I mean. Carrie, we can talk about that. If, if there's a preference to try and do it all at once, we can talk to the manufacturer and see if that's uh, a possibility. Um, and then you can see there in like the purple spaces, uh, we've, we've added, you know, more space dedicated to the support services for the building, like food storage, and laundry, and bathing, and food prep. Um, and these things will really help facilitate operations uh, by allowing you know adequate space for these for these facilities, so that everything can be really properly organized. And you know we're not trying to to use rooms for so many purposes that it that it becomes cluttered. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the traffic flow of the building, you know, we can really, we can really separate animals with the cat and dog areas being separate so that like the dogs don't need to go into the cat areas, especially if you have, you know, dogs that are more aggressive, they could be brought in through the sally port, that gray box, uh, and brought directly sort of through the back into that, into that dog area without, without going near the cats. Um, and the cats can kind of, you know, migrate through the front door and, and not really have to, uh, to pass dogs. So we should really be able to keep down on conflict between, uh, between animals with this layout. Mm -hmm. um, also, from a security standpoint, um, uh, this is an earlier plan, so it doesn't show it quite as well. But if you zoom in on that lobby, we've got a... Uh, a security window, like a reception window off of the lobby and a locked door coming in off of the lobby into the corridor uh, that can be remotely unlocked. So basically visitors can come into that lobby space. They can be screened in there before they're actually led past the security of the building and into, and into, the, uh, into the corridor. Uh, so from a security standpoint, that'll uh, you know, help keep everybody working in the facility protected um, we also have, you know, the possibility of accessing the building through the secure sally port, so that'll help keep any unwanted visitors out and secure dogs. So they're, you know, if they're being brought into the facility, uh, they can be brought into the secure enclosure and they're and they're staying inside the, the structure of the building um, without having to be like walked through a parking lot. Um, you know, we've got sight lighting cameras, security systems that'll provided to, uh, to maintain a safe and secure environment here. Very good. Um, I can follow up on, I'll, I'll send out the presentation after this so that everybody can take a look at it as soon as we get things restored here. Um, but, you know, materials, we've really gone into uh, working with, with Carrie and her team 
selecting materials that are really primarily selected for their durability for this type of use um, with any sort of decisions on appearance really following the functional needs. Um, so we have, you know, water resistant materials that'll promote cleaning, a lot of floor drains available in heavily clean spaces, continuous trench drains at all the kennels. Um, and this should really help to minimize operational cleaning costs as much as possible in this type of facility. Uh, the dog areas have an epoxy floor. Uh, the walls are protected with FRP or they're made of concrete block that would be painted with an epoxy paint. The cat areas have, uh, have sheet vinyl flooring and they have hard ceilings so the cats can't, uh, can't get into the ceiling cavity. Um, you know, as far as color palettes, we, we went with a pretty uh, neutral color palette to kind of give a, a more of a timeless feel to the building so you won't, you know, feel the need to, uh, to replace finishes to stay current with, with trends in, you know, a few years as things kind of kind of change. We're trying to keep things, uh, you know, pretty, pretty reasonable. We've got a few splashes of color in painted areas that are used mostly for... Uh, for wayfinding and a few accents here and there, uh, but that's you know with things like paint colors that are you know simpler if if you decide you want a different color in the future. Um, I've got uh, we we put together a, a site logistics plan from a construction standpoint that I can share. It basically uses the uh, the existing site plan entrance off of Mooney to get into the site. The site would be fenced. We'd have a trailer on the site. Um, and, uh, and, and then, uh, from a scheduling standpoint, um, pending approval, we'd like to go out for bid and in for permit, uh, April 19th, we would have a permit walk through April 25th with mm. bids due, uh, May 3rd. And then the notice to proceed would be around June 20th with a projected substantial completion of March, 2024. Um, the only, the, the main concerns, I guess, to, to meeting that type of schedule, uh, we need a new service, a new electrical service from ComEd. Um, and, you know, pushing them along is, is something that, uh, you know, can, can take a little bit of time. So we're, we're getting uh, into them as quickly as we can here to get that moving. We we'll wanna just kind of stay on top of that. And then uh, getting, we have, we're reusing the existing rooftop units in the existing building, but we have a new rooftop unit for the new um, dog edition. And rooftop units have been kind of a long lead item that we'll be tracking. So um, we'll have to kind of stay on top of those items to, uh, to maintain the schedule. Um, again, I apologize for not having the visuals. I can, uh, I can forward those along as soon as we get our internet restored here. But uh, are there any, any questions that I can answer on the project? Any questions? Mr. Hess? Thank you, Chairman. You know, we're, we're building this thing out and it's going to be state of art. Is there any way we could add a backup generator to it as long as we're doing this? I mean, that's, that's something that, uh, that could be considered. It would, uh, it would just come with a cost. So we can, if, if that's, uh, if that's desired, that's something that we could include as a like as an alternate that there'd be an ideal spot right behind that electric room pad out there to sure. generator with a smart switch on it I have a question Mr. Wheeler thank you uh, did you say you wanted to send the bids out in six days uh, ideally, yeah, out to out to bid would be ideally the nineteenth. We can that doesn't it doesn't have to be that. We can push it back. Um, well, no, I mean, and then how long would it be until they the response would? I, I just want to make sure I understood that timeline. Responses would be due when uh, we had uh, May third, or we could do May tenth. 
so like it, it's a pretty quick like two or three week turnaround we think for something of this size okay mr wheeler yes yes um did you want to change that date uh to may 10th uh, or leave it at may 3rd i think it's fine as long as uh, you know it's enough time for the contracts uh, contractors to uh suggest alternates because and then maybe explain a little bit about that ryan the way we're putting out this bid um and the increased cost in materials that we're experiencing yes. uh, so the committee knows how we're going to ask the contractors to bid this um, and that's why i wondered about timeline is it going to give them enough time to research the alternates you know okay thank you yeah i mean we can certainly uh we can certainly add to the time that they have what what we're doing um we've got about uh in terms of value i think it's about five hundred thousand dollars worth of value to the project that we're listing as alternate bid items to essentially allow you to see what those line item costs come in at and determine you know one it acts as kind of a relief valve for the possibility of you know we've all experienced how costs of everything have changed since uh, uh, since the pandemic um, with uh, you know and and in the construction industry those changes have been pretty fluid in terms of like you know one type of material goes up for a while isn't available for a while the costs come close to double on certain things um, where it you know for the last year or two it's been you know costs have been kind of floating around a lot so we've got a lot of alternates written into the bids to give line item costs to certain elements that potentially we would like to have in the project but could potentially you know live without um to be able to assess those items with a value put to them um and and to be able to um you know determine if if those costs are worthwhile for for the benefit of the item okay. um so it is that that does you know complicate things a little bit for uh you know for the contractors putting it together um in terms of like each subcontractor trade you know there aren't that many alternates that would affect each trade so they would you know probably only have like a, a couple that they would really you know be involved in so it shouldn't it shouldn't greatly complicate things um but we could uh you know we could have the bid date be like uh, may 10th instead of may 3rd you know assuming assuming that we're good going up april 19th um to uh to give a little more time to them if uh if you know just mm. to make everybody a little more comfortable about that and that seven days isn't going to kill us on all the other time lines. yeah so no, i think we're I fine think. with that in terms of schedule so i'll just talk to our construction group about okay. changing that is that okay with uh the committee that we push the bids due on the 10th to give them extra time to research these yes uh, okay. they're shaking their heads yes <laughs> Yes. Chair recognizes Mr. Hunter. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, Ryan, could, could you uh, identify um, who your contact person is with ComEd in terms of the new service? You mentioned that, and I, I, and I like to piggyback on what uh, Mr. Hess has indicated in as much as this uh, project <clears throat> is state of the art and uh, I, I concur with him in terms of his recommendation uh, about having a backup there as well, too. But I, I was wondering, who are, is Lisa Prati your contact person uh, in terms of getting new service in there? Uh, our electrical engineer is, has a, uh, a load letter put together to get into them. I don't know if he has a contact assigned to him, but I can find out. Yeah. Uh, you said Lisa. Lisa Prati. She is uh, uh, the government affairs person, and, okay. and she is super, super uh, to work with. And uh, you can always also uh, get a hold of uh, Senator uh, Joyce as well, too, and he can grease the skids for you and work well with uh, Lisa. Yeah, we appreciate that. That's the, that's the kind of thing that... Uh, that makes a big difference in these projects to uh, you know to have some uh, 
some contacts that can help along the way getting through that process. So I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Chair recognizes Mr. Smith, 12. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I was wondering uh, if there's going to be any type of electronic sign or marquee in front of the building that um, could show or promote the adoption of these animals. They have signs that show pictures and people drive past, they can see the pictures of these animals up for adoption. It is a state-of-the-art building um, and something like that could help. It's a brand new facility. Absolutely. Something I was just curious if there was going to be anything like that or if there could be. Yeah, we don't we don't currently have like a monument sign in the project. Um, the uh, the renderings show uh, like above the entry we have like some uh, just pin mounted lettering that identifies the building, and then off on the side of the Sally Port, uh, there's the uh, like the animal control logo we had applied to uh, to the building uh, facade to kind of give a sense of what the building is. We, we don't have like a monument sign currently in the scope. Um, that's certainly something that could be considered. Um, it's also something that um, could be considered at a later date. You know, we could like pretty simply, if we wanted to just provide um, like conduit from the building out to a potential future monument sign location you know we could do something like that so that it's simple to add the sign in the future uh, without you know without tearing everything up if uh if that's desired okay. mr wheeler thank you um the it is in the picture actually uh i was discussing it with carrie the other day um so we were we do need to get power to the to the to the front uh, to, to spotlight any type of sign that will go out there. It's not going to be like a backlit, um, you know, I don't want to say convenience store sign. It would be something more in the lamp in the line of uh, fixed in place, um, solid, not plexi anything. So it's, and it was going to be afterwards. Uh, it wasn't part of this scope, but believe me, we're, we're looking at something for out front, low profile, out of the right of way, all of that stuff. So, um, Getting to this point was infinitely more uh, important to be able to release the bids, and then we're going to tackle signage and color schemes for the outside of the building. Absolutely. Are there any other questions to pose to Mr. Kusick from the committee? Okay, no other questions. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for the presentation today. First of all, last week I, I appreciated uh, you meeting with us. Um, really. Uh, energize you know my <laughs> hoping to get all this done soon uh, for the animals and really appreciate the time that you spent with us today as well so if we have no other further questions for mr. Kusick we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today yeah thank thank you very much and uh, I, again I apologize for the, the technical difficulties no on our end here. <laughs> it happens <laughs> it happens thank you so thank much. you okay Okay, so uh, that was, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, right now, I would like to entertain a motion to authorize the release of bids for the Animal Control Building Project. Do I have Mr. Smith, uh, the motion? Do I have a second? Mr. Scanlon, all those in favor of accepting uh, the release, please signify by saying aye. 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 Mo uh, any opposition motion carried so the release will go out april the 19th so we're on a roll here this is great okay thank you um, okay next on the agenda we have uh, mr andrews uh, with his building report this morning how you doing good thank you good morning man uh you there we go uh all's well uh, we'll start with the first item on the agenda, the facility, facility dude report for last month. We had 173 work orders in the system. So again, pretty busy month. Moving on to the financial report that you have in front of you there. 
you can see uh, compared to last year, we're you know behind where we were at this point last year. Uh, but there's a couple reasons why we're behind that number because we had a lot of uh, building improvements last year, as you can see, line line item 87510, that was a lot of uh, building improvements that were supposed to uh, go to ARPA. Uh, so you can see we're significantly behind that number this year, but that number should continue to fall, and I would hope that we don't have much more in the way of building improvements. Uh, so that number kind of skews things a little bit. The one that I'm kind of more concerned with is 56400. You can see we're running about double. Uh, where we were at this point last mm -hmm. year, and that's uh, service repairs by outside contractors. Um, if you recall, early on in the year, we had a lot of plumbing repair work at JCDC. Uh, we had boiler issues, we had hot water storage tank issues, we had uh, copper supply line issues, uh, we had leaks up and down the hall main hallway, so there was a lot of expense there. Um, but I'll be honest, I just got this report a couple days ago and I haven't had an opportunity to get a breakdown of 56400. So I will do that and I'll go through it and I'll see what's, uh, you know, what makes up that number and um, I have an update for you at uh, next month's meeting if that's okay. Okay. So any questions besides that on the uh, financial report? Okay, moving on then to the uh, building report. Here at 189, we talked about uh, the phone system memory upgrade at last month's meeting. I'm still waiting on uh, parts for that, so that's on my uh, action item list. Uh, working on HVAC units, getting those ready for uh, spring. These warmer temps kind of got here sooner than I was anticipating, but uh, everything is in good working condition as of this time. Uh, I've been working with Anita and Liz DeLong out at uh, JCDC to put on a couple AED training classes here at uh, this building. So we had planned on a couple days next month. I believe we're looking at maybe two Thursdays um, for an informal training on how to use our AEDs. They're on each floor of the building. and. Uh, Having the AEDs is one thing, but having people that are, that are aware and know how to use them is another. Um, the training is not going to be mandatory. We're gonna reach out to the department heads, uh, find out who has interest in being trained. Um, and like I said, it'll be informal. There won't be any certificates or anything like that, but just a training that you know when and if someone needed to use them and is willing to use them, uh, that we know how. Because I'll be honest, if something were to happen right now, I'd have to, break out the instruction manual you know to figure out how to do it and that's that's not okay so we're going to get some training done um and like i said we got a couple days next month that we're going to that we're going to try to do that um also along those lines we're looking at uh some drills or drill rather for fire evacuation so i'll be working with the city of kankakee on that uh, probably next month as well i want to get through this aed stuff get through the courthouse stuff um and then put my focus on that so that's something that's on my list as well. Uh, bidding, uh, we're going out to bid on uniforms and mats. So we've had the same uniform and mat provider for probably 10 years. Um, I'm not happy with them for a variety of reasons. And uh, the bid I believe is published in this coming weekend in the Daily Journal. Um, so I expect to get several bids on that, obviously from our current provider. Um, over the years, Centos has uh, de de demonstrated some interest uh, as well as some others. So that's uh, we're going out to bid on that and I hope to be able to open those bids at uh, next month's, right here at this meeting next month. Good. Courthouse, uh, for those of you that have been around a while, Bones, you've been around, um, the east side, compressor at the courthouse has been a ongoing issue for as long as I've been here. And we last year we replaced it. Um, the same company that replaced it performed all the service work on the unit and we still have issues. Um, so luckily, um, after you know some emails going back and forth, they've gone ahead and replaced the compressor. So I was happy, happy to report that. So we've got a new compressor up there again. That's the, th I think it's the third one in probably as many years. Um, and they did find some other issues during its replacement. So knock on wood, um, we, we, we might have that uh, situation rectified. And for those of you that haven't been around, it would need to be reset 
once a week. I mean, it, it was it was really a pain. Um, as Jim Rowe mentioned, the grounds at the courthouse really look outstanding uh, for their Easter egg hunt. Uh, Dana and his crew there do an outstanding job, um, and they do it without me, you know, really having to say a whole lot. So that that makes me very happy that uh, I have employees that take the initiative. Um, I've empowered them to take the initiative, but they do take the initiative and they take pride in their work. So happy to see the courthouse looking as good as it does. Uh, let's see. Basement punch list is scheduled for punch punch list walkthrough is scheduled for next Wednesday with uh, PSI in the basement. Um, the doors did come in a little earlier, so we're expecting to have the project, you know, substantially completed by the end of uh, the end of this month. Yeah. Now, so I ordered chairs for jury assembly about a month ago or three weeks ago, and when we ordered them, they assured us they would be in by the middle of April. They had plenty of them. Well, like everything I've, you know, like other things I've encountered, when you go to order things, people for whatever reason tell you, oh yes, it's it's in the warehouse, we have plenty. And then when you need them, they're not there. So they're on back order. I've now been told I can expect the chairs the first or second week of May. So I've been, and this is for jury assembly. So I've been working with Diane and I told her, cause she wants to know when she can start scheduling juries in the courthouse again. And I told her I wouldn't schedule anything before June one. So if we get the chairs in the first couple of weeks of May, we can get them, uh, get them in place, get things set up. Um, and then by June one, hopefully we'll be completely operational. Sandy's office, uh, if you were at the county board meeting yesterday, we opened the bid for the um, office furniture for her area. I did verify that that bid was in accordance with state bid pricing. So I went ahead and signed that yesterday and got that off to the vendor that uh, was the successful bidder. So again, we're working on that. I've been told uh, we could have something on site in about two weeks, which would have to be then constructed and, and installed. So. We'll see if that actually happens. We're gonna have to get with, when we get for jury assembly, there's a bunch of uh, cell phone lockers down there now, and there's even laptop lockers. So when jurors come in, they can bring their laptops, they can bring their cell phones, whereas right now, obviously, in the courthouse, they cannot do that. The What we're gonna do is when they go up to the courtrooms, they can put their laptop in a locker that's down there, or and their cell phone can go in a locker uh, while they're down there. Um, we do need to figure out, I need to get with Diane and the chief judge about a procedure um, with the keys. So you put your cell phone in, you take the key, you lock it, and you take your key out, go up to the courtroom, you're done for the day, you come back, you open it up. I would hope that they would just leave the key in the locker, but history and probably experience has shown that, you know, we will probably lose keys, keys will walk off, what have you, because it's not like a coin operated deal where the key gets stuck when you put it back in. I mean, you could take the key back out. So my thought was trying to figure out some sort of collateral or something that if they want to use the lockers, maybe they, you know, give Diane a set of keys or something, you know, where they have to, I mean, I'm a hockey coach. So when I take the locker room key for the, uh, from the rink, I got to give them my keys because I can't leave without my keys and they get their key back. So something along those lines, just to make sure that um, our keys aren't walking off, but we'll work, I'll work with Diane on that and try to get a procedure in place. Annex in Old Jail, our new chiller is on site, and of course there are issues. Um, they are manufacturer issues from what I've been told. And the problem is the contractor is afraid to work on the unit because it would void any type of warranty on the unit. So they're working with the manufacturer to see if they can get a letter basically stating that they, they can work on the unit and it will not void the warranty. So I've been dealing with that for several days now. Um, all the controls are hooked up, um, it, it's ready to go. And when they went to start it a couple days ago, um, they encountered these issues. Old jail, nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, you know, Pipe leaks, toilet leaks, sink leaks, the faucet leaks, stuff like that, nothing out of the ordinary. 
uh, JCDC, our staff, so w the, the sheriff had asked us to go through and strip and wax some floors out there, which we have been doing and working through. But one of them was in master control. Well, master control can't be shut down. There's never a time when we can shut down master control. Well, you can't strip and wax a floor when you can't shut the facility down. So we went ahead and we ordered some inexpensive carpet tile and my staff installed it and they put it in and it actually looks pretty good. Um, I asked the guy, Chris, who did it, I asked what his warranty was and he said a couple days. So hopefully <laughs> hopefully we get a, a little more life out of it than that. I think he was kidding, but but in, but in any event, happy to report that, uh, you know, our staff was able to, you know, one, secure some inexpensive carpet tile and put it down for probably a third of the cost of what it would have been if we'd had to outsource um, the next thing on the agenda out there is the showers. We've talked about the showers at length at this committee. Um, they're peeling, the paint's peeling. Um, I've worked with a vendor on that. We have a bid, and as soon as they have time, which I think as soon as they're done at the courthouse, um, we're going to get them out there, which is going to have to really coordinate because whenever we go in to work on the showers, the housing units have to be vacated for 14 days. So that'll be up to Chief Kalawenzu how he wants to accomplish that, but uh, it's something that definitely needs to be done. Um, other than that, just normal stuff uh, out there. Uh, nothing uh, major to report. Like I said, to start the year, we had a lot of problems, but uh, those have since settled down. So that's all I got. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for Mr. Andrews? No questions? Okay. Um, do we have any old business to discuss? No? Any new business? Other business? Then I would <laughs> motion to adjourn by Mr. Scanlon, seconded by Ms. Monday. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And I'm sure there will be no no's. Okay. <laughs> Everyone have a great day.